Hi guys, so a couple of weeks ago I asked you for questions that you'd like to be answered by an officially college type person and I have one here, this is Maddie, who's our JCR Access Rep. Do you want to briefly explain what that means? Yeah, so I'm the Access Rep. Um, I get elected, well I got elected into my position basically to uh, represent the JCR on issues of access and admissions. So my job is to ensure like an equal and fair admissions process uh, for incoming students. So we have your questions here. Uh, we're just going to sort of go through them one by one, I guess. So the first question is, uh, you can't get in unless you've got masses of extracurriculars and impressive things other than grades. Well, I think a lot of people here do do extracurricular stuff, mm. um, but I don't think it. I don't think it's true that they're admitted because of it. Yeah. I mean, really, the only thing that the teachers care about is your grades and how good you are at your subject. Um, I think other things like sports or music demonstrate that you can time manage. Yeah, I mean, the official answer I have uh, from the admissions team is that they're only interested in academics. So if you've got extracurriculars that are related to your academics, like if you work in a museum or if you've done some lab work or something, like whatever's related to your subject, um, <clears throat> that'll be helpful. They're not really interested if you can draw really well or play a musical instrument or do sport. Um, this is this is for Oxford specifically. Like other yeah. unis may be interested to hear that, but at Oxford it's purely about the academics. Um, and like Simon said, it might demonstrate that you can time manage, but um, they're not going to not let you in just because you can't play like a classical guitar or something. It's definitely something to be said there about doing stuff that's related to your subject. Yeah, that's important. Uh, because I think one of the big things they're looking for is like passion about your subject and how yeah. interested you are. So yeah, so if you're doing history, if you're applying to do history and you volunteer at a museum, then that's obviously going to be really good. Mm. So uh, next question. Uh, for someone who's been on free school meals for most of their life, but came off the mid-year 11, are they entitled to any of bursaries or whatever that someone still on free meals would get, and will that help or hinder chances of success? Yeah, so at Oxford there's the Oxford Opportunities Bursary, um, and that's, it's, kind, it's, like, it's means tested, and it's on a sliding scale, and it's really generous, so I think even household incomes up to like £40,000, you can still get uh, some level of a bursary um, and the lower your household income the higher your bursary will be and that's on top of any bursaries or grants or loans that you'll get from the government as well um, so that that's the Oxford Opportunities Bursary. Is there another bursary? Um, not specifically related to free school meals I don't think. Yeah I mean the free school meals I don't know if it will be taken into account if you're not on them before you come into university but you'll have to check the website but the main thing will be your household income um, so if you were eligible for free school meals, then your household income will probably reflect that and you'll be entitled to certain bursaries. Um, and certain colleges as well offer a lot of financial support on top of the government support and the Oxford bursary. I heard these from frightened applicants applying to Oxford back in high school. Apparently there was this myth, probably, running, running around about one of the interviewers pointing out that the applicant being interviewed had written in their personal statement that they were really good at the piano. There was a piano in the room, so the interviewers asked the applicant to play the piano. Never heard that one. No, unless you're a music student. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they probably ask you to do that. Yeah, no, like I said about the extracurriculars, they, they don't apply to your application, so you're not going to be asked to play the piano unless you're going for like a piano scholarship or something like that. Um, they're not going to ask you to do anything, you know, they're going to ask you questions about your subject, they won't ask you to do anything that's like radically outside that area. I think, I think the problem with interviews is that there's so many myths which fly around because so few people go up to Oxford or Cambridge for interview yeah. that you hear these stories and people tend to believe them. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the best one which I've heard which is true um, was that a guy at a college near us, who I'm not going to name, who was applying for engineering, um, had an interview, was so nervous when the interview finished that instead of getting up and leaving via the door, he got up and walked into a wardrobe yes. and then stayed in there for the next interview. Yeah. He was too frightened to leave. Um, so unless you're that guy, I don't think, you know, that's nothing like that's probably going to happen to you. Like, they're not going to make you do something like that. Um, like all those things about like if you catch a football you're in yeah and like there's so many myths do not believe them um, interviewers are actual human beings they're not gonna make you do weird crazy stuff yeah unless it's related to yourself yeah. I mean they want you to do well that's the thing yeah they, yeah. they, they actively want you to do well yeah so I guess answer from that is no you're not gonna be asked to do anything really strange um, it's it's gonna be relatively straightforward <laughs> Next question, how much free time are you usually entitled to with all the work in Oxford? 
I don't know, what would you say? I think it varies. I think it varies from year to year and subject to subject. Yeah, yeah um, I'd, say, I'd say it's definitely subject dependent. Um, obviously, sciences are sort of more structured, you'll have a lot more contact time, whereas with arts you'll be expected to do more of your own reading. You might only have like, I don't want to give a figure unless I'm wrong, but like you might only have a certain number of hours a week, but then you'll be expected to do like double that amount of your own reading and research. I think it's normally something like four to five, like four to ten or something like that is like normal number of contact hours, I think, for humanities. For arts and humanities, yeah. I think for sciences, it's, well, I had probably in the region of 20 to 30, I think. Yeah. I think I have, in the first year, I had 21 contact hours a week. <laughs> So there's, there's plenty of time, like, I, mean, f I mean, I do physics, which is kind of known as being one of the more time-demanding subjects. Yeah. Um, and I, most evenings you could have free, or you could work in the evenings, have the weekend off, or whatever. Yeah. You know, you can, you, well, there's, the classic example is there's a guy in the year below me, who's a physicist, who's in the university boat club, He's, he might be rowing in the boat race. And that takes up an awful lot of time every day. So, you know, um, especially if you're good at time management in school, there's you know, you can definitely do things you find interesting outside your subject. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's so much to do. And also, the number of contact hours is not really important, because even if you do have like 21 contact hours a week, that's still less than you have at school. Um, yeah. And at school you still manage to do like all your lessons and your homework and still do fun stuff, hopefully. Um, so don't worry about having, or don't worry about not having enough free time, because you will. Yeah. Um, but time management is the key thing, I think. Yeah, I think it takes some getting used to. Yeah. In first year, I found actually that it was like, you were in school, your time is structured for you. And when you get here, it is still structured, but you have so much more freedom that you like. I ended up just working all the time because that's yeah. Kind of, yeah. That's what you do in school. Yeah, well, <laughs> that might be you. Um, <laughs> you. Yeah, it's once you get here, you figure it out. Um, if you're doing your A-levels, you're probably pretty good at managing your time anyway, um, and once you get here you'll certainly learn how to do it. Um, but yeah, I like everyone here still manages to go out and do activities and sports and stuff and still do what they want to do. It's not like you're going to be like, stuck at your desk all day and all night. It does seem to be a stereotype that it's just boring. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's really fun. And, like, busy people have more fun, I think, so no, you don't just want to be, I don't know, sitting around all day doing nothing. 